Hello and welcome back to It Being Dark in Zelda 3 in this in part 6 of, uh, Legend of uh, The Legend of Zelda 3 Links to the Past. Bum, this is the entrance into into, uh, into Death Mountain. Uh, you need the lantern in order to be able to see in this area, otherwise it is literally pitch black. And you can't see the old man who's waiting in the dark, waiting for little children to meet him. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Uh, well, watch your step there, young man. You wouldn't want to trip and fall down. <laughs> I could try yeah. to lift you back up, but my arms are very weak. He is plot expositioning at us, Cloud. Do you like lollipops, young man? <laughs> eh, young I'm not man? Really that big a fan of, of lollipops, honestly. And now oh, we have one of so the worst much... overworld areas in all of Zelda history. Fuck this place. The boulders fall. They're going to crush you into oblivion. It's not so much the boulders that is the problem. It's a combination of the boulders and the Gorons. Fucking Gorons. Yeah, the Gorons are a bunch of assholes in this game. Yeah, they, they're invincible. They, uh, they hit you for a full heart of damage at the moment. And if you and they, if you hit them, they end up uh, they end up the freezing fuck? in place. But if you talk to the old man, you've successfully unlocked this as a continue point as well as a rest stop. Nice. Okay. So as long as you are all set with talking to the lecherous old man who apparently likes spending time with little boys, you will actually have a very easy time getting up Death Mountain. <laughs> I just Not wish that the Gorons were easier, more friendly like their later incarnations. <laughs> yeah, a later incarnations of Gorons are significantly better. Honestly, I'm not even entirely sure if these are Gorons, because I'm pretty sure Gorons were... Well, no, Gorons were not in Alex of Zelda 1, were they? I am not sure about that, because all of these Zelda games are really similar in design, because they usually have mountains in the north. <laughs> Uh, are, were Gorons, uh, in fact, debuted in Ocarina of Time? <sighs> the nice, the nice Gorons debuted in Ocarina of Time, and then late, and then Zelda games that came out after Ocarina of Time also adopted the friendly Goron dichotomy. Okay. Well, what about, uh, uh it's not Wind Waker. What is the Game Boy Color one? <sighs> God damn it. Link's Awakening? Yeah, Link's Awakening. Uh, is, aren't there any Gorons on, on that island? There are. There are no. There. There actually are no Gorons on Island Kohalant. Okay. And there. And the Gorons are in. Uh, uh, the Gorons are in Labrina and Holodrum, but those take place after this game. Yes, sir. Because Link already has to be a hero before he is. Before the Triforce trusts him enough to summon him. Yeah. Shiny. Oh look, another piece of art. Let's go get it. Wow, what is this weird thing? thing. Uh, by rescuing what the old the man, fuck? Ga uh, uh, he gave us uh, the, uh, the magic mirror. And using the magic mirror while we're in the dark world allows us to teleport back to the light world and leave a magic portal behind. Don't, don't, don't you want to talk to your two friends, Lumpy and Grumpy? No, no? they are they are uh, they are cursed individuals who don't who do not have moon, moon pearls. Neither do we yet, but we're gonna get our moon pearls shortly. And they teach us that when you go to the dark world, you change your shape and apparently your ability to hold a pencil or simple objects like glasses of water help. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Tower Hera. The Tower of Hera is honestly a pretty nice dungeon, all things considered, except for the very end of it. <laughs> except for the very end. I mean, it's yeah. really nice until it sucks. Yeah, honestly. I mean, this is the dungeon that introduces you to uh, the uh, the uh, the peg the peg switch mechanic. Ah, uh, the peg switch the mechanic. The, re the rest of the dungeons throughout the game will abuse the fuck out of this mechanic, and it's annoying. You do have to clear this, yeah, room, but with the but with the mid shield, you can actually just stand in the doorway and and uh, let uh, let all the tiles fly, fire at you and be perfectly yep. okay. 
Or you could spam your, or you could you could do the same thing except you would be swinging a sword instead, just repeatedly. Yep. Actually, can you sword can you sword strike these these uh yes you tiles? can after they after they fire at you, not before but after, after. fire. Right. Yeah, that was a thing that carried over into the Oracle games. Link's Awakening also had Eagle Tower, which also made great and really obstreperous use of the Switch mechanic. Mm, these are red Stalfos. They're harder to hit, he said. And then he just two sh and then he just one shots them both. Their function was to stop you from taking out your matches in order to light your lantern. Already got the big key. This dungeon is going really quick, isn't it, Mr. Cloud? I know. It's almost like they're going to just let us walk right through. But will they? Almost. All right. And uh, with the with the blue pegs up, we can actually co continue on uh, through this dungeon. Don't you want to hear what Sahashah wants to tell you? He's got a tablet Not really, over there. I mean, I mean, he just mostly tells. Uh, he's just mostly going to tell us about about the uh, blue and red switches, how they are connected to oh. each other. Yeah, yeah, he can tell us about, about these their blue sword bitches. Affair that happened millions, uh, millions of eons ago, and why they're still angry at each other over that yo-yo that the red switch can t uh, obviously stole and won't admit to stealing. Shine, get! No, these are not shine sprites. Ouch. They look like shine sprites. Well, how do those elephant-looking things deal so much damage? <laughs> it's only one heart. And one heart is a lot of bumpers. is a lot of health. Die. Attack him through. Ah, yeah, gotcha. Bastards. How many floors are there in this tower? Seven? Uh, it's several. I forget how. I forget what the exact number is, and it doesn't honestly matter. We're near the end. <laughs> it it event it eventually comes to an end. Yep. At the tippity top. Well, so Hashem has got lots of things to say. He even has a second po tablet. <laughs> yeah, that tablet tells us about the moon pearl that's directly to the north of us that we can't get right now because you know the uh, pathway is blocked. Oh right, right. The, he's got to he's got to explain the moon pearl gimmick. Ah, parallax scrolling, lovely. I went down the wrong hole. Are you sure? Ah, uh, yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I bet you thought you were real close there, didn't you, player? Nope. Yes, I did. So we got Gorons and Dodongos. Those were Dodongos that we had slain earlier. The red, the red devil-looking creatures. Yes. And then we even have baby Dodongos later. Hell yeah. Oh, okay, so you have to fall down to in the right segment of the pit. Yep. Dumb. Let's proceed. <laughs> but we have the moon pearl, we have the compass, we have the big key, and we have the map. We're done with this dungeon. Can we leave now? Can, can, can we? Oh, there's a... Uh, I think... Do we really I think that Beelzebub would like a word with us. Get elephant, squid-looking things, please, back away. I don't like you creatures. You move really fast. Have lots of health. And you suck. You suck. Die. Again. Four. Five. There. Okay, now get some health back. Now that and we now are we must fight the worst boss alone. in the world. It's okay, Gerda. It no, is a, it is no, the it last is one in the Fuck light world after boss. all. Mold Dorm's big and he's random. Moving around, hit his tail. Don't fall down. <laughs> so. I don't actually have an, uh, a note prepared for this cloud, but this is one of the edits that I ended, uh, ended up making uh, for this fight, for this boss fight, because I absolutely hate this boss fight. 
It's annoying think, because think... if you fall down the pit, then you have to do the whole fight all over again. Yes, uh, he he gets fully restored and you do not. And there's only a limited uh, there's only a limited amount of health in the pots to grab. And every time you hit him, he moves a little faster than he was before. Actually, that's a that's a misnomer. He only upgrades at this point. Ah, oh, now he's a super frantic. Oh, 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 don't miss because then he knocks you all kinds of ways. Oh my like god! So. Nope. And jump so. cut. Jump cut. And so. Jump cut. Oh, I love it. It's it's practically and a death so. montage. Four. And if you fall down the middle pit, you fall down the entire fucking dungeon. Well, man, eh, it's kind of. It's yeah, two floors, but you know, it feels like it's the entire dungeon. So yeah, fuck this Good. fight. Yeah, this fight sucks. This is the second worst boss in the game for me. I mean, the, I suppose I suppose the strategy is stay stay as close to the center of the platform as you can. But as if you you, you only need to hit him once to get knocked to the center. edge. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure this is the time that we actually kill him. I, I hope so. You've you seen you seem to have you seem to have studied a few leaves from Cloud's book of how to edit bosses. <laughs> I honestly think it was Johnny's, sure. uh, Johnny's book that I was studying, but, you know. So I plagiarized Johnny's book. Interesting. I'll have to let him know that his work needs more references. Here I'm trying to see if I Bro. can actually use bombs in this fight. No, he's uh, the only weapon that you've got that will actually damage Moldorm at this point is the sword. So even if you do detonate a bomb next to his tail, it won't do any damage? Indeed. What the f- What the fuck? And Gerdat has edited in some random goodness. Yes. I edited- I edited in the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the jackpot scene from, uh, <laughs> uh from, uh, from Devil May Cry 3. Cause fuck <laughs> that fight. That- that fight does- that fight deserves a better conclusion. Moldorm can suck my balls. Mm. All right, there we go. Moldorm is dead. We have all three pendants. Um, so from here, we can either continue exploring Death Mountain, which is kind of pointless, or actually, can't, no, no, we need the hammer to continue exploring Death Mountain. That's right. So yeah, Dang now it. we just gotta go pull the Master Sword. Well, first we must. Walk past the old man again. No shortcut pits here. There's no shortcut pits, but we don't need any shortcut pits because this is a shortcut uh, all the way back out to Kakariko. Wait, is it? Yeah, isn't there one pit that like dumps you out? And oh, oh, we're already at the we're already at the foot of the mountain. Nice. Yep. And Lost Woods is right there. No, no, gotta keep going. Lost Woods is actually the entrance to Lost Woods is over on this screen, actually. Oh, thank God. Good, good game design will place the next segment of the route relatively close to where they leave you off. Yep. Bad game design will say, fuck that. Not only are we going to throw fake Master Swords at you, we're going to make you waste all of your time. <laughs> this is the Gamble House. The, uh, the, ga the gambling houses in this game are actually stupidly broken, so if you want infinite rupees, you can just gamble away uh, your money, and eventually you will have infinite money. Pretty much, yeah, because, I mean, even if you fuck that up three times, even if you fuck that up twice, if you get it right on the third attempt, you get a refund. Yeah. One in three chance, you are a winner. And... Lost Woods is done. Booyah. It... Make way, my animal friends. We have much work to do. No, oh, look, it's H.I.D. Ah. Uh, gibberish. On, cataclys on Cataclysm's Eve wins three symbols of virtue. 